So the place of articulation tells us uh, where we uh, place our tongue and our mouth to obstruct that airflow, which changes uh, the consonant sounds. Um, so there are uh, eight, um, uh, I'm sorry, seven different places of articulation. The first one is bilabial, meaning that you put your two lips together. Um, and that's what obstructs that airflow, uh, causing different sounds. So for example, p, if you were to say the word, I mean, if you were to say the sound p, notice that your two lips come together and that's what it obstructs the sound. Uh, labial dental is lip and teeth touch. So if you were to go f, right, that f sound, notice how uh, you are placing the bottom teeth on the lip at the top. Um, interdental is when you uh, you push that air th between the teeth. So to say uh, a sound like thin with the th, th, uh, th uh, notice that you place your tongue in between your teeth, right? Which is where that that label comes from between teeth, um, and push the air through that space. Um, for saying the sound. Your, uh, your tongue actually hits the roof of your mouth by your teeth. S you can tell that it's right above the teeth. S okay. Uh, th the palatal place of articulation uh, is uh, placing your tongue in the hard middle palate area. So to say the sound shh, shh. Um, so you can tell that your tongue is slightly um, backwards from where it was uh, at the alveolar ridge. Uh, the second to last place of articulation is vela, which is the soft back palate. Um, this allows you to say the sound g, g. Notice that if you keep saying it g, g, you can you can feel your tongue hitting that back palate um, place. And then lastly, the back of the throat is used in the glossal place of articulation to say the sound h, as in hit. So if you practice h, you can feel that um, the back of your throat gets smaller and you're forcing your, uh, the air through that space. So these are all the places of articulation and that's how we change how we are obstructing air in the mouth to cause different consonant sounds. Here's a, a video showing you um, the tongue hissing these different places. Right, um, the alveolar ridge, the lips, the tongue, and the velum uh, being used um, to make those different sounds. A chair, a chair, a chair, a pa, a tra, a car, a dare, a nair, a fair, a zair, a sa. So I'm going to play that again for you, and what I want you to focus on specifically is when the uh, person uh, says the words, says the sounds, t uh, or s. Um, check out the lips, right, how the lips are moving. Check out this back of the tongue and the places that it hits. Check out the tip of the tongue and um, where it hits uh, b before the teeth, right here. And these are the teeth. So I'll play it again for you. A chair, a chair, a chair, a pa, a tra, a car, a dare, a nair, a fair, a zair, a sa, hep, het, heck, hop, hot, hark, a tea, a chair, a tear, a tu, a tu. A tet, a tot, a tech, a pen, he be, he da, he ge, he ga, he ya. I have put blood on her two clean yellow shoes. Stop. Okay. Um, so that was place of articulation. Now let's move on to manner of articulation. And what manner of articulation uh, is. Uh, sort of describing uh, is the ways in which um, uh, air is forced uh, from the mouth. Okay, So 
The first one is a stop, which represents complete stoppage of air. So that was the, uh, the example with p. Um, so if you, if you place your, your hand in front of your mouth when you say that sound, p, p, you should feel all of a sudden a, a gust of air coming out um, after you release your lips, right? P. Um, fricative is when you force air through the narrow opening of your mouth, as in f. Affricate is a combination of a stop and an affricative, such as in chin. So in chin, you also sort of have a, a semi-complete stoppage of air, as in p. p. But um, you also forcing air through the narrow opening of your teeth. Uh, in the nasal um, sound, such as nut, you actually force air through your nose. What's really interesting about nasal sounds um, are that if you if you close your nose, you aren't actually able to say it, um, say the sound. So let's try that out. Okay. So the word is nut, and what we're focusing on is that beginning n sound. Okay. So if you were to close your nose and try say that sound, n, it's pretty impossible. Um, and the reason why is because you're actually forcing the air through your nose to say that um, sound. Another nasal sound is m. As in mat, mm. um, so you can try that. Try closing your nose just to say that sound. Mm. Doesn't work either. Um, in a liquid, the air is forced from the mouth laterally from the sides of the tongue. So in the word lap, and particularly the sound l, um, you're noticing that your your tongue is touching the top of your mouth, l, um, and it's actually stopping air from flowing out. And what you end up doing is the uh, air comes through the sides of your mouth. So, uh, lap. And then uh, in a glide, the lips and tongue move while you are producing the air. So, uh, uh, a sound like wah, wah. Um, your lips and tongue move while you say that. Okay, so that was manner of articulation. Uh, we also went through place of articulation, which tells you where your tongue is touching different areas of the mouth. The manner of articulation is talking about how the air is uh, stopped or forced out of the mouth, and that also changes um, the sound. And the last ways in which consonants are formed, um, f uh, sort of sound-wise, is through voicing. Okay, um, so. Uh, if we take the sound p, and we've been talking about p in both the placement and the manner, um, but uh, compare p with the sound b. Okay, so p, b. So nothing changes between the two. The place and manner of articulation are the same, right? Try it out. P, b, p, b. Same thing happens. Um, you still have a complete stoppage of air. Um, you also, uh, it, it's, it's bilabial because you put your two lips together in terms of place. Um, but the difference uh, is in the voicing. So what I'd like you to do is place your hand on top of your throat. And let's repeat the two together, okay? P, B, P, B. What do you notice is different? What you should no be noticing is that your voice box works when you say the B version, but not the P, P, right? There's no vibration. But when we say B, B, now there's vibration. And that's the difference in voicing. Here's another one. S, right? Place your hand on your voice box. S, no vibration. We do, if we say Z, now we can hear the vibration. Same thing with f and v. Same thing with th as in think and th as in then. Um, uh, so let's watch this little clip. Um, it's pretty cute. Um, and this voicing uh, might have um, a role to play in sort of the miscommunication that happens in this video. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächters. Das Gerät ist das Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. 
speaking. We are sync. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are thinking, we're thinking. What are you thinking about? Okay, so we saw that he misunderstood sinking for thinking, right? Because both s and th are voiceless. Right? They, no voice box is used, and so we call these voiceless uh, consonants. Um, the z and the would be uh, voiced consonants. Uh, so let's talk about activity four, um, where I show you how phoneme placement can change the pronunciation of words. Um, and I'm going to have you look at two groups of words. Um, and this is activity three, so if you, you could locate activity three document in the same folder where you are watching this video from. Also, there's going to be a link um, shown on the uh, video right now that you can click, and that will open the document for you. So what I'd like you to do is take um, the next 15 minutes and say these words out loud to yourself. Uh, in the first group of words, the hunted, buzzed, stopped, heated, slipped, slammed, wished. Um, I would like you to note how the ending D changes in pronunciation when it's preceded uh, by different phonemes. So write down next to each word what the D letter sounds like. It can sound like either D or T. So it's either D or T. So D or T. Uh, notice that those are voiced and voiceless pairs, right? D, T. Um, the placement and the manner of articulation are the same. The only thing that changes is the voicing. Afterwards, once you've done this, come up with rules for why the pronunciation changes. Um, after you've done that, I would like you to do the same thing with the second group of words. Cats, dogs, buses, churches, mats, buzz, roses. Um, say these words out loud. Note how that ending S changes in pronunciation, either as a S or a Z. And afterwards, come up with rules for why the pronunciation changes. Uh, you can pause your video at this point, and then we'll pick up once you come back. <laughs> 